Oh Lord my God, when I know someone. And we are made it. This is it. Yeah. Well, that was the fit. That was the baths. That was the fit in shops, electric shops. But this is about the only thing that's left. These, because these are tile rock. This was the, this was the. You came out of the baths and then you went into the canteen. There's a big, big canteen. Everything was big in Mardi because it was a, a, re, a modernised colliery. See, from the from 1950. Any miner, and a lot of the boys are gone now, of course, would tell you that when they came to Mardi, it was a totally different kind of atmosphere. Because I worked on a coal face, you had all the humour that naturally came with working in adversity. The harder the conditions, the more kind of a strange kind of humour came out of it, and they had a strange kind of camaraderie, if you like, and uh, it lasted right through. So it was a big, big story, believe me. And of course, where there's coal mines, there's communities, and the mining communities, I don't think anywhere in Great Britain, including shipbuilding and engineering, you found a better, more courageous kind of people. Believe me. When I first came to Mardi, there were lots of shops here and it was quite a busy community. You had two butcher shops, a dress shop, clothes shops, toy shop, there was a cooperative, a laundrette and those have all gone now and it seems that every year one part of Mardi is slipping by, it's dying. I remember them bringing a pile of coal and he said to the assembly, oh, this is the last piece of coal that's going to come out of our minds and this is a very symbolic day. Yeah, I just remember sort of like, the, the impression that that made on people. I think Mardi's quite a political place um, and people have, have been activists over the years. And even growing up, people hated Maggie Thatcher and I think, that was still with you, people still spoke about it and the hatred for her. Yeah. And I think that was sort of my first impression. Like, my father wouldn't even have the Sun newspaper in the house because of what they, they printed during the strike. So that, and that was, and he's still one now, and that's uh, 30 years on. The Ronde Valleys became a coal mining community because of the advent of steam. Two thirds of the contracts for the British Navy in the First World War came from South Wales, and the majority of it came from you, from the Ronde, because there were 53 pits working, 24 hours, you know. It's impossible to imagine how much um, work was going on, you know. The community in Mardi during the strike was very, very strong. They all worked together, they pulled together, and if people were in um, financial destitution, people helped each other. When the mines were here, you had all the miners working in there, and we're talking about a number of, of hundreds of miners, but also you had the offshoot companies that supported the mine, and once the mine closed, a lot of those jobs disappeared. I mean, to say Mardi Colliery employed about 400 people. Chub Fire, we employed up to 450 on a heyday. There was the bookbinding factory, which um, employed quite a number of people. There was the Porter's Paint Factory, um, the Rubber Factory. Well, all these places have gone, and there is no work for anyone in the locality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Started work, left school 19, when I was 14, started work at 15, and then became a miner in 1953. My grandfather came from Somerset. 
and he settled in Ferndale in 1908, and he became a miner. My father became a miner. My father's brother became a miner. My brothers-in-law became a miner. Robert, my son, became a miner. And of course, you'll be going on to something better, won't you, of course. As part of the Air Cadets, I prefer to follow career of aviation. I'm going to study A-level biology, maths and physics, and then go to a university where I find the course is better for me. In an area like this, it wouldn't really be suitable for the expectations I expect in life kind of thing. I'd have to go somewhere where it's more active and more there's more to it than... Opportunity, isn't it? Yeah. 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 You know, all the educated people, instead of coming in, they're going out to the area and, you know, we're losing people like that, you know, people with good knowledge and able to do things for the community. I just feel it was so sad that when they took the mines away from the valleys, they didn't think of putting any other employment here. And over time, I think sometimes that may have had a negative impact on some of the children. Every year we enter the heritage, the Welsh heritage competition, the history competition. And this year what I wanted to do about Mardi Hall because Mardi Hall has always played an important part in the village. Oh, let me tell you the history of Mardi Hall is a long and lively one. Yes, a legendary place. But only we oldies remember now, somewhere only we know. Originally built by the miners and their funds, it was another place of hope, but importantly, it was a place of entertainment from the harsh work of the mines. Also, there was the 1984-85 miners' strike, and once again, Hall became an important place for the community. Miners and their families gathered there to provide support for each other and collect their food parcels. The 90s Hall fall into decline, and this was directly linked to the closure of Mardi Pet. The last pit in the Ronda, which closed in December 1990, the hall remained a local legend, and it seems everyone of a certain age has a story about it. Mardi Hall was such a big, fantastic building. So much went on in there, and with its closure and demol. Uh, demolition, I wanted the children who are 67 to realise what an important building they, this had played in their parents and grandparents' lives. And when that went, I think a lot of the soul went from the community. We have um, lost all what we had um, for enjoyment and get together sociality. That's gone out to the window. There is nothing now for us in the locality. Yeah, I think there's a sense of abandonment and that people don't care about us. I think the legacy is still there, essentially, because when they took things, they didn't replace them with anything else. Yeah. So they, they, they didn't replace it with infrastructure. They didn't put anything in terms of training programmes when they, they took employment away. So they left a legacy then, and now they're blaming people for the legacy that they left. You're in the old Mardi Primary Community School, but we moved schools over to by Grigwen. The boxing club has been going on for years and years. We have loads of friends coming up here. We have new starters. I would say there's loads of excitement. You'll get to meet new friends and you'll, you'll enjoy yourself. Because I reckon people would enjoy it instead of lying around and getting bored.
There is so much opportunity with the countryside that surrounds us for the children to go out and do other activities. They don't have to stay indoors because of where we are living. They're not negative about where they live. They're quite positive. They've still, in their minds, have the same uh, abilities and also the same opportunities that other children would have. There's obviously problems in Māori. It's not perfect, no, it is. But I think the positives really do outweigh the negatives. I think it needs to play more on its heritage yeah. and it's sell more. We need to sell ourselves a lot more than we actually do. Bring the road up to start with. Uh, reopen places like the library because it's for the education of the children. They're on about education, education, yet they took the library away. Um, and the people would value the area and give a lot of their uh, time and effort to make it more communal like it used to be years ago. Māori has been very kind to me. It's provided me with not just friends and friendship, my family are here, but most of all, it's provided me with a job that I love. I feel privileged to be working here. Mr.